Hi everybody, I'm Christian and uh, this is Lazy Devs. This is um, Pico 8 Hero. <sighs> We've run against the limits of Pico 8 where we suddenly can't do things anymore because we have reached a, a maximum amount of tokens. Oh, dang. Are we going to give up like this? No, we are not going to give up like this, but it's it's not, not a nice situation to be in. So how are we going to save all those tokens? Hmm. Well, there is a couple of tricks that you can go through. There's like a, kind of like a checklist of things you can do. The problem is uh, my own, my biggest pet peeve with saving tokens is most of these um, these um, how do you call it techniques they make the program a lot less readable. Uh, I'm gonna explain you what I mean. So let's say so this is a good good example where okay we're defining a bunch of variables. Uh, you can also define variables like this. You can define multiple variables in a line. I think we may have done this. So look, we're going to copy this. We're going to copy this. Right? Sometimes you can do this. Sometimes I think we've done this, we've done this before. And this is our for high score. These are just empty, empty, um, empty uh, objects anyway. So it's kind of like, eh, whatever. Let's just, just do this real quick, right? Bam, and I think we saved five tokens. We were at eight, 800, 8,200. But I, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna open up a notepad. Maybe not this notepad. And I'm gonna start um, keeping track of how many we saved. So, you know, this little line saved us five tokens, but you also see that it's made it a bit less readable. I mean, okay, this, these are the values here are not really special here. So we don't have to actually look up because we just know, okay, these are just empty bunch of, we created a bunch of empty, empty variables. But here, like we're, we're, we're talking about variables, which we might actually want to tweak at some point. Mm, that's kind of iffy. When you get like this huge line, we have to scroll to the side and this Pico 8 window is so tiny anyway. You get into trouble at some point. Like you are like at some point, like just making the code uh, very badly readable. So I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be doing this too much. Um, I know I don't want to be doing more than we have to. Let me put it this way. Um, I wanted to go, but I, before we do anything more, I, I still want to go through a bunch of stuff that we we, we might want to do it. Um, one important thing is also that not all of the, because we initiate all of the variables here in, in the init function, not all the variables need to be initiated, right? We could actually start going through all the variables and see maybe we, for example, um, the first thing that we call is start game. Wait, wait, what do we call first? Let me see real quick. What is the thing, first thing that we call? I think start game maybe? No. I think we we call somewhere a function that brings up the start menu, and that's like I think a good situ situation where we can go like okay, um, we let's just let's just um, uh, let's just like all the variables that we define in this function where we start a new variable, uh, start in uh, the start menu. Let's make sure that those variables that we not actually defining our, our upstairs in the init function because kind of like we're starting the variables twice and that's that's a lot of tokens actually starting a new variable is a lot of tokens here's another thing that we can that we can simplify without making it less readable so here we're just creating a b object and we put we fill a lot of fields with this so let's see we have at 8195 let's see how much we can save if we define it like this we open up this curly bracket and close it down here like this and all of these are going to be fields. So we just put a bunch of commas in here. So it's going to be like an array because, you know, objects are basically arrays. And then you can go like this. See what's happening? And that saved us nine tokens. Like this, just we just rewrote this a little bit. 
and we can even go like oh okay uh how about we go like re just return it immediately you know without declaring a variable or anything we can just go like this right and that's even more variables here right i think yeah one more variable uh one more token i'm sorry always a good idea to especially now since we can actually run it now let's see if we can actually there's some problem here oh yeah now the h h3 is no longer defined we have to make sure that we something we broke something with those with those variables that we defined there see because we we're running this reset each s and here all the all these guys are getting reset anyway so maybe wait a minute what is happening here h3 d, d get Anyways, let's go. Let's um, let's go back to where we put everything in one line and see what what we what we did wrong. Something we did we did wrong. So one, two, three, four, five. Ah, yeah. So we're defining five variables, and all of these should be empty objects. But we only have four objects here. So we, when we do that, so the the last variable hs3 that wasn't an object. It was just nil because we did, didn't have here on the other side. In general, you know, it's like you know x y z equals one one two three right so x is going to be one y is going to be two and z is going to be three if you have less than that then it's like x is going to be one y is going to be two and z is going to be nil it's not going to be defined you could just as well write like this so just just so you're like aware of this, okay, yeah. Okay, so we are already underneath our level, but I want to go through, and especially this thing that we just did there. I think um, with the with the ball, I want to try to do it. Let, let's run this and see if this works. Just to make sure, because sometimes you rewrite something. It's called refactoring, and it's suddenly not working anymore. That seems working. Okay, so I want to go uh, through a similar process uh, to see if there's um, for some other locations there w that I see where, for example, here where we're adding a brick, we could do the same thing here, right? Um, so we're gonna go local b equals like this, and then we open this, and then we close it here. You know that's an obvious win here because we save a lot of tokens that way. And the program is still readable, it's not completely broken. So bam, that's 173, 8173. Cool. Good, good, good. So let's see if, if there's any any other obvious wins. For example, here is also I think a situation where we could pull this off. We set it to a new ball, and then this is especially um, problematic because we not only are we the C this dot is always a token. So you you have seventy three. If you remove this, oh, actually it doesn't work. Um, yeah, seventy three, and then we remove it, and then it's, you know that's 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 a lot of stuff that was just removed. So this is one token, but also this is also an additional token. So we don't want to call this ball one a lot if we can avoid it. Um, so hmm. can we somehow avoid it though? So let's see if if, if something like this will work. Local b equals. Um, ball one, and then instead of the one here, we're gonna go and be. Yeah, that will save a bunch of tokens, I think. Yeah, see, that was um, six tokens that we just saved like this.
Uh, okay, here, copy ball, same thing. We can we can save this in the same way. We go and go B. There's probably even an easier way to do this. Um, something you can also do is, which is actually really nice, is you can loop through all of the properties of an object, like through an array. Um, because, you know, arrays and objects are the same thing in Lua and kind of like make like a generic copy this object kind of function. But I'm a bit suspicious about them. Um, I, I kind of want to make sure that I know what I'm copying in case there is some things that are copied by reference. I want to make, make sure that I'm not copying the reference if I don't, don't want to, I guess. And then we're going to return this immediately. And then we can save this entire variable. All right, so we are at 800, 155. Let's, let's scroll through this a little bit, see if we can get some obvious wins. Um, 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 um. Every time we copy an object or we create a new object, there is an opportunity uh, here, see? So these are good things. So we're down to 8,152. So that was just like three tokens that we saved, but it's okay. Actually, we could even be like, like this. So we can av avoid this entire variable here. And then we can make the definition and the equation here. So this is going to be like a really nice neat. See, we're saving so many tokens just for, just for, just rewriting stuff a little bit and making it more compact. Uh, there's some problem here. Copy ball. Oh yeah, there's a too much. The last thing should not have a comma. Hmm, still. Oh, it's not equals. making sure it's generally runs you know so not um, not breaking something in a, in a in some kind of crazy fashion so again going through some looking if there's an, any obvious wins and it, it anytime I see some a lot of things underneath that look similar uh, that means probably we are writing um, like here for example we are writing um, a lot of things um, that means we have uh, redundancy happening. So for example here we could we could we could go like because we have two local statements so if we go like this again it makes it a bit less readable but uh, whatever you can go like this and then even here we can put this in line inside the camera statement i know this for a fact because i've been actually using the same function in a different program and i I wanted to make it a little bit slimmer. So yeah, this would save us some tokens. We're at 8,139. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, so here, for example, a bunch of um, local statements. If we put everything in line, it would be even faster. There's even a way of making this even, even slimmer, but we're not using these too often. So I'm not sure if I actually want to go there. Might be just just fine. Oh, look, this this is neat. See, this is this is the kind of juicy stuff. Yes, yes. So look, we're gonna go add part there. Ah, oh, this is gonna be amazing. I think I did twice in the last time around, right? Okay. Uh, 
All right. Oops. Cool, right? Oh, the last one doesn't get one. Uh, that was the particle particle function, right? There's some unclosed thing you have an ink. E oh yeah, maybe not didn't close this part. So if particles are working, then we know that that's. that's yep, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's working. Sweet. So again, like these, for example, we could simplify. But again, that would maybe make this a little bit less readable. So ah, let's let's just keep it in there. I'm looking for something that doesn't change the look of the program too much, and that just gives us just huge amount of tokens. We are already look at how many tokens we saved. We already saved like almost a thousand tokens, without without even changing a lot of the program. But of course, once you once you run out of the, out of the obvious things, you will have to start using some advanced techniques, and then even you know, eventually you're like, oh no. Eventually, the, you will run out of tricks to save tokens, and then you are going to be in a sad place. Also, I, from a from a, from experience, I can tell you that. Um, debugging a program where you are almost at the maximum token count is a nightmare because you cannot actually add some additional code to just check some stuff and ooh, yeah that's ooh, yeah that gets really really annoying very fast okay oh yeah some something we could do also here is with the levels because just one two three four I mean it's nice because we can we can rearrange but we're not going to be rearranging levels a lot so let's go let's make them and that's gonna be the last thing we're gonna do and i think then we have enough tokens to implement um at least start implementing the, the remaining things like this and then we can delete all of these and you can put comments uh, inside a curly bracket because basically we open a curly bracket up there you see and then um, and then all of this stuff is basically still inside the curly bracket. So all of the subsequent lines, all of the subsequent levels are technically inside a huge curly bracket that goes over multiple lines. And so we don't have to actually write this level equals in, in front. We can just we can just line them all up behind commas. So always comma next line. Do, 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 Oops, what was that? That was weird. Good. And then, of course, very important at the end, close the curly bracket. There we go. Um, let's see if this is, yeah, levels, there we go. Yeah, it's still working. Yeah, it's, it's a no problem. See, no, all the levels are working. So how far are when did we went down? 8,066. Um, so, wait. Oh no, it's not, it's not thousand. It's, it's, we, we, we reduced it by around 130 tokens. So it's not thousands. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I miscounted. But it's still good. It's still really good. So this should be allow us to actually run this. So now we actually have the, the sudden death. So let's see if sudden death works.
Okay. Ah! <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I got hypnotized by my game. So in a second here we should see the sudden death. We might actually start doing the sudden death stuff uh, when we're down to three or so. Might be, might, be, might be okay. Or down to two. Because now if it was sudden death we would actually, both of these things would explode. Okay, so now we hit one. Now should we, yeah, sudden death, there we go. I didn't like the look of that. I think we should make it black. So now I got like a lot of um, lot of points because the sudden I hit the sudden, sudden death thing. Uh, let me try. Let me before we try it again. Uh, let me make this actually black. I didn't like the, the dark. That that wasn't good. So good. So let me go with zero or maybe like this. This and red. Yeah, that might be a fun. Two and eight. winning So much concentration. I probably should set it to fast mode. So this time around, I want to see. Uh, I'm gonna not hit the sudden death ball if I can avoid it. So I can see if uh, what happens, uh, how long it takes, how long it, it feels the sudden death part. Okay. Uh, don't don't worry about this beeping. That's that's just like. Mm, don't you worry about that. It's fine. Ah, oh, Jesus, I hit it. <laughs> no. Um, let us... Can we can we make the level smaller so we can test it easier? This is what I'm asking. So let's make this level... Let's copy this part out. Minus, minus. And just make it... Like, just let's start it in sudden death mode, right? What happens when that happens? nothing happens so you need to hit the yeah okay that's a long time okay so now um something that is still left to for us to do is to add some kind of feedback to this right it would be nice if we knew what is sudden death, like what is happening here. So that's something that I wanna do here in this update SD. So if we're counting down the timer, I wanna return here. So if it explodes, I'm fine, just do nothing. <clears throat> but otherwise, um, how are we going to do this? Maybe we're gonna need another function for this. First of all, let's make sure that SD brick when we start a new game, Where do we lose the ball? Well, if a win game, well, never over.
Yeah, well, obviously, um, hmm. So when we serve the ball, we definitely want to want to set SD brick to. We're gonna set the, um, so there's no sudden death brick. So the sudden breath, uh, sudden sudden breath, sudden death gets reset. I think that's a good idea uh, when you die and when you respawn the brick. So you have to keep the ball float for a certain amount of time. Uh, so like this. Um, so if you're serving the ball. But also, let me see, where are we? Mm. I think it's new collision, right? No, no, no. I think it might be an update functions. Update game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if level finished, that's fine. Power up timers, that's fine. Uh, might be in a new collision when we when the ball leaves the screen or ball update might be yeah yeah okay um yeah here i'm going to put it in here we don't actually have a um uh, yeah let's go let's go here um so here the brick is gets reset to zero so so there is no timer here that's good Um, so what I want to do is I want to make it blink if, uh, and I want to make it blink faster the, the shorter the timer is. Uh, I mean, I want to make the... Oh God, I'm just... Uh, um, I want to make the sudden death brick. I want to make it blink. I want to make it blink faster the, the closer we get to the, um, to the cutoff. So... I'm going to call it blink T for blink timer. I mean, again, I probably can leave it out here. Let, you know, let, let's try this. Uh, we're gonna, not going to define it up here, but we're going to define it down there in the function because I think it will be fine. Um, so yeah, we're going to go here. Okay, so if trigger is D, we're going to set the SD blink timer to Let's set it to SD timer divided by 10. And then this is something that we're going to need here. So we're going to go SD blink timer um, equal minus equals one. So we're going to count down and we're going to go if the timer is smaller than one. Then we're going to reset it to whatever it's now. And, um, and we're going we're gonna to blink the, 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 the brick. And we're going to, I think there is a flash bri brick thing. Let me see, uh, in a draw function, we can tell. Draw game. <clears throat> so here, is it FSH? I think it is. Yeah, FS, FSH, that's flash. That's kind of like a counter time for, so flash, let's bring it for two. Same here, right? So let's see how this looks. I think it needs to blink. Um. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I like the the end at the end at how it how it blinked um, how it was almost like um, glowing. Um, I think it needs to blink for longer.
Okay, that's good, but I think that this timer is too long. Um, let's half it. Again, the design, game design rule, when it, whenever something seems... I want to tweak it in value, just half it or, or, or make it twice. Oh, I want to make, have to make sure that I'm not accidentating it. Okay, so now of course, obviously we also want to make a sound when it blinks, obviously. That seems like a good idea, right? Let's make see if we can still make some sounds somewhere. Okay, this seems good. Let's... That's good. So 29. No SFX. Good. Maybe a, a bit. Um, the sound was might be a bit too long. Let's try this. Peasy for breezy. I, I think this this feels right. This is good. So I will reset um, our levels. I think this is important. Uh, where is our level? Uh, there we go. So on the next episode, we are we are that we are. Whew. Look at look at our to do list. It's almost nothing anymore. It's it's like it's like we're almost through. I will actually do a playthrough and see if we're gonna um, put the threshold for a sudden death a bit higher, so it's not just the last brick that explodes, maybe like the second to last or third to last. Okay, so there's, um, yeah, I think, yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna put these things as the things we have to do and this is something that we might not do. Okay, um, so I think the next thing we're gonna make is we're gonna make the Mega Ball less useless. Uh, we're gonna make it sh make it so that it triggers when it actually hits a brick, so it's you, you kind of guarantee that it always will destroy something at least to some extent. And then uh, when that's done, we're gonna make the sash less confusing, and then that's gonna be it. So see you next time around, guys, and yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.